The word cheap has a negative connotation. If you call something cheap, you might mean that it's poorly made. Thirty four fifty. If you call someone cheap, well, they might punch you in the face. This is bullshit. But I want to be clear. When I say cheap in this video, I really mean reasonably priced. See, I came back from San Francisco this year with these three little darlings in my bag, each priced below five hundred, and I want to use them to illustrate a trend that I'm seeing on the lower price end of the market. It's not fully mature yet, but if it continues, I think it's going to make us really happy. It's going to make the Swiss a little scared. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is WatchCrunch. So I'm seeing more and more brands make appearances on the WatchCrunch app. For example, last week, Richard, the CEO of Studio Underdog, just introduced himself. So if you ever wanted to have a conversation with the people behind these great watches, go claim your username on the WatchCrunch app. Bye mom, I'm off to the war is what I imagine myself saying when I put this watch on. Modeled after a World War I trench watch, this Vario looks like something that came straight out of an old drawer from your grandpa's study. Here we have the 37 millimeter version. It also comes in 40, but all the details are there. There are the big Gothic numerals on a gray enamel dial with a railroad minute track at the periphery, blackened cathedral hands at the center with a second subdial at the six. The pocket watch style case completes the look with thin wire lugs. Besides a Miyota 82 S5 movement hidden behind a closed case back, you never know that this thing wasn't 100 years old. And this is my first point about why cheap watches are getting so good. When I held this $388 watch in my hand for the first time, what struck me was just how solidly built it was. The contoured pebble-like case is smooth without any sharp edges. It sports an anti-reflectively coated sapphire surrounded by a polished bezel, and it just looks so period correct on this leather boon strap. So as Swiss brands continue their price march up the side of an Alp, there's room now on the budget end for these micro brands to come in. And as manufacturing techniques and tooling continues to improve in Asia, these watches that are like 500 to a thousand dollars are finished just as good, if not better than Swiss watches price double that. This Vario is so confidence inspiring that I wouldn't think twice about wearing it every day. So if not build quality, then where's the battle going to be fought next? Guys, do me a solid, drop a like for this video. If you want to hang out some more, make sure you're subscribed. As great fit and finish become commonplace, I believe that it's design and storytelling that are going to be the driving factors for buyers. But aren't design and storytelling different things? Not if you do it well. And perhaps no micro brand tells a better monolithic one-liner story than that of Brew. It goes something like this. Jonathan likes coffee. Coffee comes from machines. Jonathan likes the design of those machines, so Jonathan made watches that look like coffee machines. Maybe a little more than that, but he will tell you that the best part of waking up is a brew on your cuff. To me, you buy a brew for design. You don't buy it for its technical specs. To keep costs down, most of these watches use quartz movements. This metric comes in a few colors and are all driven by the VK68 Mega Quartz. This allows for a smoothly sweeping chrono hand. And compared to previous models like the Method and the Retrograph, the metric is less on the nose about the whole coffee thing. Instead, this TV dial with the integrated style bracelet is full of 70s energy. And if you get it in gold, it has a bit of like a movie producer vibe especially if the movie is mediocre pornography. The wrist feel is amazing, partly because that bracelet just hugs you, leaving no gaps, and partly because of its 36 millimeter size, which sounds small, but because it's a squarish case, it wears like a 38. Contrast is high with a matte black dial featuring gold markers and hands, and subdials sit asymmetrically at the six and the nine. So the PRX didn't do it for me, but I finally feel like I found the PRX alternative that I've been looking for. This watch, it's not trying to be something else. It's its own thing, and it oozes design energy that will knock your socks off eight days of the week. At this price point, it's all about delivering smiles per dollar. Speaking of having fun, I always thought the idea of a seasonal watch was just kind of silly. That was until I met the Notice Sector Sport in Glacier. 
I can see myself drinking Arnold Palmer's all summer long on the front porch with this watch on. It has an icy blue iridescent dial with markers surrounded by black borders. The 369 format, it's immediately recognizable as sporty, but also restrained layout. And a screw down crown means that you wouldn't think twice about diving into the pool with this thing. Despite its playful nature though, make no mistake, this watch has that solid fashioned out of a single block of steel kind of feel in the hand. And what you can see is at this end of the price range, brands, they dare to let their hair down a little bit. Micro brands aren't restrained by lineage or prominence, so they make whatever they want. Now this can sometimes go horribly wrong, like when design elements don't gel or the fonts don't match, the colors clash, or worse, someone just blatantly copies a Daytona and puts their name at the 12. But when it goes right, you get this notice. A greatest hits of like the last hundred years of watchmaking. I see an explore dial. I see hints of Hoyer Carrera in the faceted lugs. I see Tudor Big Crown with grippy knurlings and I see Zinn H-Link bracelet. And at 38 millimeters, it's like the mid-sized Rolex Explorer I always dreamed that Rolex would make. So those are the, th wait, we have a last minute entry. Have you ever thought you wanted to try a Rolex Deep Sea but didn't have $26,000 laying around? Well, enter the Spinnaker Picard. So engineer Jack Picard was actually the person who took the original Rolex Deep Sea down the Marianas Trench back in the 60s. So a fitting name for this monstrosity. Well, at least it looks big at 45 millimeters, but I was surprised at how well it wore on my six and a half inch wrist. No, it's not gonna slip underneath any cuffs. You just have to be careful you don't concuss someone on accident. Some people say you can't mill sapphire into a dome shape. Spinnaker said nonsense and made a magnifying glass out of the material. This creates an extreme bubble effect, completely warping the dial from an angle. On that dial are solid blocks of loom and an orange second hand. The side profile of this thing is ridiculous. The beefcake of a case easily swallows up the Seiko NH35 inside and hidden in that 21 millimeter heights, we find a helium escape valve providing 550 meters of water resistance. If you ask why someone would need a watch like this, you are asking the wrong question. You pay the 550 for the Picard because you've grown tolerant to the softer drugs and now you need the hard stuff. So let me say it again, cheap watches are getting good. All of these pieces feel extremely well made. They take chances and they lead with their design. No, they don't have movements from Switzerland, but these movements from Asia are becoming reliable workhorses. Machine tools are getting more precise, cheaper, and the internet is connecting suppliers with designers. When your mom can send some CAD files to China and have a finished watch materialized for a couple hundred bucks, the battle is gonna be fought on design and storytelling. The Swiss, they had a head start on the story part, but they can't rest on their laurels because every year these smaller brands are making some serious ground. But what do you guys think? Do you have love for micro brands? Download the WatchCrunch app and let's get the conversation started.